and someone from halfway around the world came into my country and started stealing my land and killing my family, guess what? I would defend my country as well. So, I absolutely 100% defend the right of self-defense, and I will never shy away from that. I will not join the long list of embarrassments who condemn terrorism while forgetting to acknowledge that the biggest terrorist on the planet is the United States government for all of its terrorism that around Israel the world. Do you has a right to defend itself? Absolutely, every country does, and, it, and that's exactly why the hypocrisy and the lies of Israel are so transparent. Are you telling me we don't have the right to defend, our, defend ourselves when I saw dead bodies on that ship and we were hitting people with bars and sticks? We don't have the right to defend ourselves, but they do, do they? Hamas doesn't recognize the right of Israel to exist. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like the African National Congress and Nelson Mandela refusing to accept apartheid and recognize apartheid. I say that Israel, if it wants to be a genuine partner in any kind of peace, needs to destroy its whole ideology of Zionism. Zionism that makes other people goyim, who do not deserve to be in the Holy Land. That's the real problem. If Israel will embrace every people, including Palestinians, equally, human rights respected across the board, then I would challenge Hamas to change its charter and say we will acknowledge Israel. But until that time, I see no difference between Nelson Mandela and Hamas in refusing to accept apartheid or the Zionist Israeli state. The Israeli government, their first job is to defend their citizens. They have rocket attacks from Gaza. They have intercepted, in, in 2009, the Frankop holding hundreds of tons of, of war material for Hezbollah. In 2002, the Karin A holding dozens of tons of weapons for Hamas, sailing to Gaza from Iran. They are trying to defend their right to exist. That is why they, their argument is it's self-defense. And uh, if you believe that, then I've got some swampland in Florida to sell you as well. If you wanted peace and you carried out the policies of Israel, then you'd have to believe that these people are the biggest idiots ever. It's like America saying it wants peace, yet conducting state-sponsored terrorism in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's a lie. Israel is lying. They don't want peace because peace... Are they lying when peace, they say there was no humanitarian aid Israel, on the ship? Israel, to them, and the Zionist agenda, is the end of the Zionist project. They don't want peace. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. And the policies, to any thinking Does person, Hamas reflect want peace? that. I can't speak for Hamas. I think that I, I, what I do know, what I do know about Hamas is that they've actually done something to help their people. And they have also, I think, helped to give ammunition to their enemies by violating human rights and not doing everything that they should do to respect the rule of law. I'm not going to sit here and defend Hamas any more than I'm going to defend anyone who violates human rights. However, Hamas has done a lot to help its people, and for that it has to be given credit. And, and it not, also and cannot be And do not think bought. that the Israeli people would say that of their own government. They elected it. I actually think that the Israeli government is a reflection of the propaganda that has made the Israeli people so ignorant of the facts. Or defensive. They are under constant rocket attack. They feel that they How do... How many people have the rocket attacks killed? These are glorified fireworks against the fourth largest military in the world with the latest technology and weapons of mass 3, destruction. 3,000 rockets out of Gaza in 3, the last 3,000 rockets three that years. killed how many people? The point is that Israel is feeling, Israel feels under threat. I That's think the, the rockets are a desperate attack. Tell us this. Let's go back to what was on your, let's, the... let's talk about what was on your ship, because Israel says that there was no humanitarian aid on that ship. <laughs> what we was had, on it? We had uh, passengers on that ship who are expressing their humanity in a way that's a form of humanitarian aid. That was not the primary cargo ship. To deny that the cargo ships, which were also confiscated, didn't have things like cement, didn't have things like wheelchairs, didn't have things like medical supplies, is another lie. But that's just it. Israel just lies incessantly. So why not? If you wanted to get this human aid through to the people of Gaza, why not do what they said? Dock in the port of Ashdod in Israel and allow even an Egypt or an international organization to deliver the aid? Because it would be acting like a fool who believes that Israel has any intention of actually delivering all the aid that you're bringing. They don't allow cement in. They don't allow building supplies in. They don't allow all sorts of things to the point that you have an unemployment rate that is the highest in the world, a poverty rate that's African levels. You have children who are malnourished and anemic. You have terrible, terrible hardship. Obviously, Israel doesn't want to let all the supplies in So when required. Israel conducts this inquiry that it is into what happened... It's a farce both and a joke, and we all know that. Even though it has David Trimble and Ken Watkin on it, the Canadian and well, Northern Ireland. Well, you discredit Ireland. yourself now, David Trimble, don't you? You know? Sorry. If they asked you, would you give them evidence? Absolutely. I'm giving evidence right now. I have nothing to hide. Would you go back to Israel to give them evidence? I'm seriously considering that. 
because you know what? There are thousands of political prisoners from Palestine, my brothers and sisters who I consider to be my family, who don't have the same opportunity that I do. They don't have that shining light on me. They don't have BBC interviewing me, yet they're sitting there in prison not having access to their family, and they're my brothers and sisters. So I'm thinking about it very, very seriously, even though I know there is no justice in Israel. Do you fear for your life? You've talked about the fact that you might be on I, I believe hideous. I believe in what Malcolm X said. When he was asked, what is the price for freedom? Malcolm said, the price for freedom is death. And if you're not willing to pay that price, then don't use that word in your vocabulary. And did you I think you were going to die? Life. Did you think when you were going to die when you were on the Mavi Mama? No, I thought we need to defend this ship. We need to succeed in this mission. We need to end this blockade. That was what was running through my thoughts. You used to be a U.S. Marine. You've moved quite a long way from that. Thank God for that. You Thank burnt God your American that. passport. I renounced my U.S. citizenship formally because I do not agree to the terms of citizenship. I refuse to pay into a tax system that's being used to commit mass murder, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Your anger, how will you use it next? Based on love, and that's why I do what I do. How will you use it next? What will you do I've next? been involved in a project called Aloha Palestine, a social enterprise intending to do safe trade with Gaza to bring in items counter to what Israel is getting from Britain and the United States, weapons of mass destruction, small arms and things like that, to bring in safe trade items such as things that are needed for the civilian population to live a decent life. And that is a problem that we need to address in this world is the absolute lack of the Palestinian people to exercise self-determination. And living on aid is not the answer. So my focus is trade. And if I can't be the director exports? of that company... What about their What about the other side? Because a lot is focused on the import, getting stuff into Gaza. Surely the best thing for the Gazan people would be to allow to export all that they do. Yeah, and they have uh, millions of carnations that they could be exporting, and they feed it to livestock because it's not allowed out. So is that a security measure from so Israel So what do you do well? next? Is it another, is it another trip on a, a ship in to try to break the naval blockade, which will stay? You know, I have a family. I'm a father. I have a beautiful son, a beautiful wife and I have uh, some responsibility to them, but I have a greater responsibility to the world that I live in. I don't know that it's possible for me to not be on the next flotilla, and I'd really like to say publicly right now, Hugo Chavez, you need to be on that flotilla. Nelson Mandela, if you can possibly do it, you need to be on that flotilla. Anyone who's serious, who has any real influence in this world, who really cares about justice, you need to be on that flotilla. We will end this blockade, and that's where I intend to be, on that next flotilla. The chances of any of them going on that flotilla presumably were reduced when there was violence. Do you feel in any way responsible on the behalf of those on the ship for the violence that came from it? I feel responsible for defending that ship and the mission which was intended to protect innocent civilians who were being collectively, punishment in a, collectively punished in a policy which would only be considered insane by any thinking, compassionate person. So it was worth it? It was absolutely worth it. We need to do it again. Ken O'Keefe, thank you for coming on Hard Talk. Thank you.